Again, we had an incredible week um, uh, hanging out with your kiddos, and, and uh, there was a theme that uh, traveled throughout the week of this thing you heard Pastor Steve just talking about is rescue, uh, that God has come to rescue us, and we are, uh, I think, maybe in maybe the first generation uh, here in the Bible Belt of uh, a people who, just to be honest with you, many are oblivious of the need to be rescued. Uh, that it's almost as those like rescued from what? And uh, I'm thankful for our uh, guys this week that uh, were just clear and gals as they were teaching the kiddos about the need for rescue. And I want to just pause also real quick. I was going to mention this earlier and I forgot. Uh, one of the things that has just blessed me as your pastor this week as I watched um, the thing that is, is, is increasing among our tribe here is uh, young men who are getting involved in children's ministry. And so you know who you are. Thank you, men. Uh, absolutely. Uh, for far too long in the church, that has been something that's just kind of been pushed aside as that's women's work. Uh, and guys, it is not. Um, and I'm grateful that we are seeing our men step up. I was watching... Uh, Austin, I was watching you guys over here a while ago doing the song, and y'all are down there doing the, the motions and everything, and uh, just thank you. Thank you guys for uh, just serving this week and, and uh, uh, giving it your all. It matters, amen? It really, it really matters. Uh, but we had guys that are teaching this week about this idea of rescue. Pastor Brooks came, and uh, on Monday night, he, uh, he shared with us a, a, a really memorable outline. God is good, we're bad, Jesus came to rescue, turn to him. Uh, that's, that's memorable. If a guy like me can remember it, anybody can remember it, amen? You don't have to say amen there, but it's, it's true. And, and the, the reality is God is good. He is a good God, amen? And, and, and the part that, you know the part that I don't like about that outline is that we are bad, because I really hate to admit that. Uh, but the truth is, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no way to spin that in a positive light, amen? There's no way to look at that and say, man, that's a good thing that we're sinners. No, the Bible would go on to teach us the fact that because of that sin, it has separated us from a holy God. Pastor Norm came in on the next night and uh, used some really cool illustrations and, and had a, a clean rag and a really nasty rag. I don't know what he had on that thing. Where the what anyway? But it was a really nasty rag. And so the clean rag is showing this is this is what we are under the righteousness of Jesus. How God sees us that we are clean. Under the dirty rag, showing us the fact that sin makes us dirty. But here's the great news: Jesus came to rescue so that we might be clean again. Amen. Isn't that great news that we we no longer have to be in that state of sin? And so all week long we heard of this need of rescued and. And, and, and I, I want to just clue in on one word this morning uh, in just the next few minutes about what gives us that rescue. It's the word grace. We love grace. Amen. Grace is that unmerited favor. In other words, something I did not earn. Right? The, the Bible says that for all of sin and false are the glory of God. But the wages of sin is death, which means that's what we earn. We, we earn death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's grace. You didn't earn this. You didn't work for this. You didn't get so pretty that it's like, oh, you're good looking. Go on. No, no, no. We earned death, hell, and destruction, but because of the grace of God, he has given us an eternal hope. So what I want to do in the just next few minutes, I want to walk you through a one of my favorite passages of Scripture that explains to us what grace uh, does for us. I won't even make you stand up this morning. Praise God, y'all look about half tarred. That rain kind of make you tired this morning, won't it? But praise God for it. We needed it, amen? Uh, we really did. And so um, and, and go to the book of Titus. If you brought your Bibles, go to the book of Titus. Um, one of my favorite books in, the, in, in all of the Bible, uh, along with the other ones. But I like this one today because that's where we're at. So Titus chapter 2 is where I'm going to be looking at. And I'm just going to be looking at verses 11 down through 15, so it can't take long, just a couple verses there. Um, in Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 11, if you found it, say, uh-huh. The Bible says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, 
looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority, and let no one despise you. Father, we thank you now for the word of God and pray that you would bless the re reading and preaching of it. And Lord, may it just be this morning, there might be some in here this morning that would say, I need to be saved, I need to repent of my sin. May this be their day. And God, we will celebrate with them in Jesus' name, amen. So what I want to do in this passage, I'm going to just take just share with you three things. And I say three because I'm a Baptist preacher and that's just how we our minds are pre-programmed to think. But there's three things I think that grace does for us that I'm flat telling you I am pumped up about. Hey, and by the way, if we're talking about eternal life in, in, as the antithesis of eternal damnation in hell, is there really anything on earth that we ought to, ought to bring more joy into our heart than that? In, in all seriousness. Now, I understand you guys got some things in your life that get you pumped up, right? If your ball team's winning, some of y'all get pumped up, and if they're not, you're mad and depressed. If you got money in the bank, you're pumped up. If you don't have money in the bank, you're mad and depressed. If, you're, if your kids are behaving, you're just like, well, miracles still happen, and you're pumped up, and, and, and everything's good. But if not, it's just like, mm, okay, yeah, that's what we signed up for. But, but, but the, the reality is there's nothing on earth that should bring about more of this, how the New Testament describes joy unspeakable and full of glory than this idea of being the recipient of grace. Would you all agree with that statement? I'm so happy. <laughs> Tell your face this morning, amen, okay? We, we really ought to be pumped about this. So, so let me just walk through this. First thing I see in the text that grace does for us, and here, the, the, here again, I want to stay in the, the, with this in the backdrop of this, this rescue that came to us from grace. Grace redeems us. Grace redeems us. You see it there in verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. If you jump down to verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might, there's the word, redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works. Now, some of you have heard this story, but I'm going to tell it anyway because some of you haven't. I learned about redemption as a small boy, uh, a very uh, pricey lesson. Some of you had lessons like this when you were a child that just stuck with you the whole life because they, you thought you were about to go see Jesus. You ever been had those lessons? It's like, if dad don't quit whopping on me, I'm fitting, we're going to go. And so uh, we were at the babysitter's house. It was right after Christmas. We just got these new Daisy BB guns. Anybody have a Daisy BB gun as a kid? Praise God. Weren't those things great? And we, I mean, we had, the, we had the, the good ones, okay? And they, they looked like a 30 30. And we were so proud of them things. And, and so we were over this one particular babysitter's. We went to a lot of babysitters for some reason. We didn't stay in any of them very long. And, and this particular one, we were out there, and she told us that we could go out and shoot squirrels. Now, if you. It, don't write me emails about that, okay, because we shot squirrels. And so she liked it when we were out of the house instead of in, and so we go outside and shoot these squirrels. And so while we're out there shooting these squirrels uh, or shooting at squirrels and pretty much anything and everything that moved, uh, we found this old barn out behind her house that had a, a whole pallet of bottles, of empty Coke bottles. And y'all remember back in the day when you drank your Coke bottle, you didn't just pitch it out over the truck to hit a road sign. I mean, you did some of that, but you, I'm not promoting this, okay? So quit judging me. I'm just telling you how life was. But, but you saved those things, and when you got a flat of those things together, what'd you do with them? You took them back to the grocery store, and what did the grocery store do? redeemed them they bought them back and so the lesson was that um, we felt like since she had so many they should be shot amen well how many did you shoot all of them she had a pallet full we shot all of them many times there was nothing left but just shards of glass everywhere. We didn't get discovered for a week or two, uh, but I do remember still to this day the whipping I got and the lesson I got from my dad 
on redeeming something, that it means to purchase something back. It used to belong to the store. Now the store is purchasing something back that used to belong to them. Well, here's a picture of the gospel, right? When Jesus Christ came to earth and he died upon the cross, he is purchasing back. He's paying the price, the heavy price, to purchase back those who once belonged to him. He, Y'all just sat there. He paid the price. He paid the price to purchase you back so that no longer do you and I have this wage thing coming. You remember the wages of sin is is death. Well, what do you think that death means? Because some of us had this, this warped idea that death is just like, well, everybody dies. No, no, that's not the death he's talking about. He's not just talking about that the wages of sin is you're going to have a funeral someday. No, 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 no. That death is eternal separation from God in a place called hell, a place that is so horrific you and I can't even begin to imagine how awful and wicked this place is. That's what we had earned. That's what we had coming But the free gift, the grace of God gives us eternal life through Jesus Christ. So Paul Paul says here to to this, this man Titus, he said, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And the second thing is this. Are you all okay? Okay. It doesn't get better than this. You you get that, right? If you all were Pentecostal, you'd already fell out on the floor. Amen? Number two, the grace of God reforms us. You won't like this one as well, but it reforms us. Number one, it redeems us. It pays the penalty and purchases us us back. But number two, it reforms us. That means that it changes us. Now, contrary to popular opinion, you can't just be redeemed, quote-unquote, born again and saved, and just carry on. It just doesn't work that way. You get that right. Look at what he said in the text in verse 12. This grace that's brought salvation, that means we're born again. It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. The word soberly there means self-controlled. No longer can I just lose my mind with somebody. And some of us need to go pick some of our mind up that we've scattered everywhere and lost. We just feel like it's just, I mean, again, it's our, our culture says it's just okay. If you feel angry, don't just hold that in. Turn it loose, praise God. Quit. Y'all, he's teaching us. The grace of God is teaching us to deny ungodliness. In other words, you've got some ungodliness. I've got some ungodliness in me. And it tries to come out from time to time, right? Have you not ever been in traffic? Have you never been on... Here, let me set the scene for you. 71st Street, Tulsa, December 23rd. And it's a Saturday. Any of you ever been there? Praise... Where does people come from? And it's like, I don't know where they come from, but they all drive like they're going to hell, amen? Amen. And it, it, it tests us. It, it, it boils something up in us that we just want to turn loose. And it's like, ram them to Jesus. Amen. Listen, Paul is being so practical here in the text. He says that this salvation that's appeared to all men, this, this redemption that's come, this grace that has come, it teaches us we live different now. I talk different, I, I, I walk different, I, I look different, I drink different. Amen, praise God. Uh, my... We're just going to stare at you while you have your fit up there. It changes us. Now, now, don't miss this. In verse 14, he was talking about redemption, but look what happens there with this redemption. It says, who he gave himself for us that he might redeem us. Listen to this. Redeem us from every lawless deed. In other words, he, he, he takes us out of lawlessness. Now, don't miss this because here's where so many of us just, we stop right here. Well, what do you mean, preacher? Well, okay. I got saved, so what's that mean? Well, I mean, I, I can't do the bad stuff no more. I can't 
you know, I can't cuss as much, and, or at least not around the preacher, and, and I, you know, I can't do the stuff I used to do. I can't run around like I used to do. And it's, it's almost as though that, that, that knowing Christ and being a, a Christ follower is all about this long list of don'ts. Do y'all ever get that? That it's like you just you can't do that. You can't drink this, smoke that. Uh, you you can't go there. You can't dance there. You can't. You say, well, I, I heard that you danced this week, preacher. I didn't think Baptists could dance. Some can, some can't. Amen. I just can't. Christianity following Jesus is not just about the can'ts. I want you to listen here again to the text. He redeemed us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous, listen to it, for good works. He's called us out of the don'ts and given us a whole brand new life of the do's. Now follow me. Now do these things I've called you to do. Hey, there's a whole generation of people that are perishing and are needing a rescue. They'll never hear about it. They'll never receive it unless we do, unless we go with the gospel and share with them, just like we did your kiddos this week, Jesus came to rescue. So he redeems us. He's paid the price. He reforms us. He's He's changed us. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's my life verse. Why? That's me. You would not. Some of you struggle with me now. I'm telling you to hate me before I come to know Jesus. And the third one, and I like this, this is my favorite. He rewards us. We all like rewards. Amen. No, I'm just too holy. I don't need a reward as long as I'm just disciplined. (laughs) Verse 13. Looking, it's so good. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. He redeems us, he reforms us, and oh, praise God, he rewards us. You guys get that, right? He didn't just save us, and he didn't just take us out of evil works and into good works and said, good luck. No, 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 no. He says, I've got something coming for you you will not be able to contain. I was watching this morning. I get here, as you know, on Sunday mornings, I get here early, and it's quiet, and and um, did my my study time, and, and uh, so I was on uh, my, uh, my little computer in my office, and I was looking at some social media stuff on there this morning, and I seen something that I, I hate these videos because I don't like to cry, and, uh, but they're the ones, have y'all seen the, the videos where uh, the, our soldiers, airmen, you know, and all those Marines, they come home from uh, being deployed and all, have y'all seen these dumb videos? I don't know why people make videos that want to make you cry. But anyway, they show up like at these kids' school, their baby's school, and, and, or at a football game or whatever, and it's so emotional. And I watched one this morning I'd never saw before. And this dad, who was an Army soldier, had been gone for a year, and he comes uh, to his house, his own house, and he knocks on the door, and uh, his son, who is just a young lad, comes out and he sees him. And you can just tell he is blown away. And, and he jumps into his daddy's arm. It was pretty cool to start with, but it got bad for me because I felt stuff I don't like to feel when this little boy just begins to just cry out, Oh, Daddy, I missed you so much. Oh, Daddy, I'm... And he was just, he was so overcome with emotion, oh, Daddy, I've missed you so much. I've waited so long for you to come home. I've waited so long. It was, it was incredible. And I thought about this as I'm watching that stupid video. Can you imagine what that day is going to be like? This thing that Paul said is the blessed, blessed hope, the glorious appearance. 
appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one you've longed for, you've lived for, you've, you've sacrificed for. Can you imagine what that reunion will be? You think it's something when uh, the Marines come home. It is nothing compared to what it will be whenever our Redeemer shows up and brings, uh, he's snatching us up, up off of this earth and we're going to be in his presence. We've never saw his face before, right? But on that day, listen to me, on that day, I'll see him face to face. On that day, the one that I pledged my life to, on that day, the one who redeemed me and rewarded me and has transformed my life, on that day, the one who went to a cross for me, on that day, I will see him face to face. And oh, my soul, what a day that's going to be. Oh, what a day that's going to be. So, church, I, I want to encourage you this morning. That blessed hope is not for preachers. That blessed hope is for believers, all of us that have given our life to Jesus. So here's my heart in sharing all of this this morning. I don't want you to miss it. I, I, I don't want a single one of you to miss it. I don't want any of you to, to be on the sidelines and saying, what happened? Why didn't that preacher tell me that all I had to do was just give my life to Jesus and I could know him? Because I'm telling you today, you can know him. You don't have to remain in your sin. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to perish forever. You can know Jesus. You can be forgiven. You can be saved. If he can save and forgive somebody like me, it's a cinch for the rest of y'all. I struggled when I got saved. I so struggled with the fact that I had been so bad, so fake for so long. No way would God want me. I just remember wrestling with that. And I even told my dad that the night I got saved. I, don't, I just don't think there's any way God would want me. What a, what a silly thing for a man to believe. What a silly thing. Not only did he want me, he... He invited me. And he invites you to repent of your sin, place your faith in him, and come follow him. That's that picture. Don't want you to miss that. He's not just trying to come mess up your life. Because I hear people will say this when I'm sharing the gospel. I got some living I want to, I still got to do. I ain't, I ain't quite ready. Really? Man, you don't know what living is. You don't have a clue what living is. So I'm still chasing girls, or I'm still chasing boys, or I'm still, I don't want to give this up, give this. Really? You're, we're talking about perishing in an eternal hell as opposed to the free gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus. Seriously? Man, he wants you. And I got you, you've got to get this this morning. He loves you. He loves you so much. That he went to a cross. He paid your price for your sin. And now through this ignorant backwoods preacher, he's saying, won't you come this morning? Won't you come give your life to Jesus?